Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna start working on the second video of the Project Long Necklace. In the first one we did this tubular necklace, spiral rope. So today, oh well this is the 80 centimeter one we did and this one is 70 centimeter one. So they're both spiral uh, rope necklaces and today we're gonna work on herringbone necklace. This is the 80 centimeter one and in the tutorial we're gonna make a 70 centimeter so I just want to make sure I have different lengths of the uh, rope. If you guys haven't watched the first video, Project Long Necklace is all about long necklaces. I'm trying to create a lot of different tubular ropes and then once we're done with that we're gonna create a lot of different pendants to go with them. So this is we are still in the beginning so if you just joined you are just on time all you have to do is just watch this previous video. But today we're gonna work on herringbone. So we're gonna go ahead and get the materials for this. You'll need two different colors. If you can see, I had a small area of uh, switching between color to color. So just a small uh, graduated effect here. I'm gonna be using lavender and then I'm, I'm gonna be using brown. So these are the two colors I'm gonna be using today. And on top, Around the clasp, I, you will need 6mm beads. Here I used natural stone, but today I'm going to be using 6mm fire polish. And then I'm going to be using the same clasp. The clasp is very important here because one side of the clasp has to be small enough for your pendant to go through. So make sure your clasp on one side is not bigger than your tubular necklace. So the width of your tubular necklace and this should be approximately the same. That's why you need to use 6mm beads not bigger than that and one side of the clasp has to be small enough so I'm gonna be using the same clasp so one side is quite small and you will need black Nymo I'm gonna be using black Nymo with this size D if you are using different colors you might want to think about you know if you want to use white or just make sure it doesn't stick out between the beads too much and then you will need two different sizes of needles I'm gonna be working with size 10 in parts where it gets too tight, especially when I have to add more thread or even at the ends where I have to attach the clasp, it's going to get very tight. That's when I'm going to use size 12. And then you'll need scissors to cut the thread. So I'm going to go ahead, thread my needle with comfortable length, which is two yards. I always work with two yards. And then uh, when I have to, I just add more thread. And if you don't know how to add thread to herringbone, there is a link in the description box down below where I show you how to attach a thread to herringbone project. So let's get the materials ready and we'll get to work. So I have my uh, first bead ready. Now as you can see I'm using two different beads. So the ones on the side, I'm just calling side beads, and then the ones on the center, center beads. So we're going to start with side beads. I'm going to be using uh, lavender to start with and in the middle as a center I'm going to be using this bright brown. So this here, usually herringbone you start with ladder stitch but here because of the way I attached the clasp I don't use ladder stitch so that's going to be something different. I already covered one uh, in the previous tutorials I covered one tubular herringbone bracelet that where I started you know with the classic ladder stitch but here it's going to be different. I'm going to pick up six 11 notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, three, six. I'm gonna drop it down. I'm gonna leave a tail of about a foot, which is about 30 centimeters. That will be enough for me to add the clasp on one side. And I'm gonna go through all those six beads one more time. And then I'm gonna go through one more bead to turn it into a circle. When I pull my thread, it all turns into a circle. That's what we need. I'm gonna zoom in from here and we start our herringbone. I'm gonna pick up two 11 O's, go down the next 11 now. Just wanna help the beginning a bit to lay it properly. Go up the next bead. Pick up two 11 nose, go down the next one. It's just in the start, you want to make sure you start properly. Don't have to do that afterwards. 
go up the next bead. up to 11 nose and go down the next one don't mind the tail you can just hold it down and here we have two rows of herringbone now I'm gonna go up the next two beads we're stepping up And pull the thread. Pick up two 11 nose. Go down the next one. And then I'm gonna go up this one bead here. Pick up two beads. And then go down next one now here when I pull my thread I want to push this two sides together and pull the thread so see that thread it's quite big thread there so you want to make sure you pull it nice and tight so you don't have that thread there I'm gonna go up the next one it's quite wonky in the beginning but it will get easier once we have a couple rows so on the next herringbone here I'm just gonna go up one and pull the thread pick up two 11 nose and then go down one and now here I want to push all sides upwards and pull the thread now I want to here to step up I'm gonna go this two beads upwards and pull the thread oops now it <laughs> look, looks like a triangle but you just have to push it all up and pull the thread just hold it down like that take two beads go down the next one now here I'm gonna go up one bead pick up two beads go down the next one go up one bead here pick up two beads go down the next one And now here we step up. I'm gonna go two beads up here. And now, when I let go, you can see it's turning into a tubular shape. Once you have a couple more rows going on, it gets easier. Pick up two beads. Go down the next one. And pull the thread. Go up the next one bead, pick up two beads, go down the next one. Go up one bead, pick up two beads, go down the next one. And here we step up by going two beads upwards here. Now can see it's turning into a tubular shape nice and easy it's a bit wonky in the beginning that's the hard point uh, that's the hard part because you know you have to hold on to wonky parts but after a couple of rows it turns into a, a tubular shape and it's easy to hold on to I'm gonna pick up two beads go down the next one go up the next bead Pick up two beads, go down the next one. Go up the next bead, pick up two beads, 
go down the next one and then we step up by going two beads on this side and that's how you just continue you already have to wear shape rope see I'm gonna show you one more time one more roll and then I'm gonna let you continue on your own pick up two beads go down the next one Go up next one bead, pick up two beads, go down the next one. Go up one bead, pick up two beads, go down the next one. And now when you finish the whole row, you step up by going this two beads up and on and on until you have your quad length now here i'm going to explain what i did on mine here this bracelet is approximately 80 centimeters maybe even a bit longer this necklace i want to make 70. so this uh, from a clasp length from 6 mm to 6 mm is slightly more than five centimeters but i'll just count it as five and then see this part where we gradually a turn from one color to another that's about two centimeters so I have two of them here on both sides which means four centimeters four plus five nine centimeters so I have nine centimeters already gone so I have left 61 so this part the center color I'm gonna make 21 centimeters which leaves me 40 and 40 I have to divide between these two parts here so this from start to the part where I start graduated effect is 20 centimeters. Has to be 20 centimeters for me to have 70 centimeters of the necklace. So here, this is the start of my necklace. I'm gonna continue until I have 20 centimeters of this color. Then I'm gonna meet you here and I'm gonna show you how to gradually turn into another color. So 20 centimeters of this, and then I'm gonna meet you here. Now that's my sizing. You can do your own you can make it longer shorter you can do it whole necklace in one color that's entirely up to you but this is what i'm doing you can stick around with me and do the same thing so i'm gonna meet you here once i have 20 centimeters of this color so now i have my 20 centimeters of herringbone and it's time to switch to the center color now i do a slow transition and uh, i found that you know, the graduated effect, it's usually randomly adding the beads of the center color and then making it more and more when you eventually switch to uh, the other center color. But I tried to do that in one of my necklaces, but it didn't really work for me. <laughs> so I took a more mathematical approach. Now in herringbone, because we have three units of herringbone, every row, every top row you make is six beads. So what I did here, I have 10 sets of six beads and I started with here, five beads of the side colors, one bead of the center color, same here. Then I start switching four beads of the side color, two beads of center color, same here. And then three by three, same here, two by four, two by four, one by five, one by five. So that's how I do my graduated effect. Now that's gonna give you a short uh, span uh, here, as you can see, it's a very short uh, length of a graduated effect. If you want to make it longer, you can add more. Instead of having two rows of each, you can make it three, four, as long as you want. I mean, it's up to you. But I thought my two centimeters is pretty much enough. If you don't want to do graduated effect straight from here, you just switch to center color. That's all it is. But I wanted to make it a gradual end. What I do now, I just pick up this five, six bits here and then just randomly add them. Like what I do here, I pick up two random beads from there and go through the next bead. Go up the next bead, pick up two beads, go down the next one. Go up the next bead and pick up the last two beads and go down the next one. Go 
and then I step up and here I'm done with the six beads I pick up the next six beads and do the same thing once I'm done pick up this row second one once I'm done and so on until you're done so once you're done adding all this you have to make it in a a particular order first goes all five ones and then four twos and then three threes and so on until you finish this one and once i'm done adding all those 10 sets of uh, sixes i'm gonna meet you here so i went ahead and added all those 10 sets of sixes and you can see it gradually transformed into a brown so at the top i have only one lavender bead left so from here i get rid of my uh, side beads for now and take my browns and continue my herringbone. Now I'm gonna do the center color 21 centimeters. You can do your own length. And once I'm done with my 21 centimeters, I'm gonna meet you here and we're gonna continue from there. So I went ahead and finished the center piece. I have 21 centimeters here. And now what you do, you do the exact same graduation, but heading backwards so what you do now remember here we started with five colors of lavender and then one color of brown but backwards what you do now you have to have five colors of the center bead and then one color of the side bead so i'm going to start with five colors of brown one color of lavender same four colors of brown two colors of lavender same and so on until the last uh, two sets i have one color of brown and five sets of lavender and once you finish adding all this you continue with your lavender with your side color and there you don't really have to measure it anymore because you just once you're done adding the uh, uh, graduation effect here you just continue all the way adding your side bead until you have exact same length so once you reach that point where you have the full length of the necklace ready we're gonna meet here and i'm gonna show you how to attach the clasp so just do the um, uh, tra transferring from the one bead to another the same way you did the uh, first side if you didn't do the this effect and just straight away switch to the center bead you just do the same here so just make sure both sides look the same and make sure you get this uh, second side of the side bead the same length as the first one so just compare them and once you have the same length we're gonna attach the clasp so I got both sides identical length and now I'm gonna show you how to attach the clasp I have really short length of thread left, so I'm not sure it's going to be enough, but I will try. I really don't want to add another thread right now. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. Now I added the last row here and then I went up, stepped up. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pick up one bead, go down the next one. So instead of two, I'm, I'm adding only one. And then I'm going to go up the next bead, pick up one bead, go down the next one. Go up the next one, pick up one bead, and then go down the next one. So instead of adding two beads on each row, I'm adding one. And now I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna go this bead here. Oh, I don't know why it ended up. I need more beads. And then here, once I came out of the top bead, I'm gonna pick up my 6mm bead, drop it down, and I'm gonna pick up seven beads. One, two, three, four, my clasp, and three more. One, two, three. So I have seven beads and the clasp. And then I'm gonna go down the 6mm bead, pull the thread, nice and tight. And then the, the see this bead I was coming out of? I'm gonna go through the same bead through the other side. And pull the thread. Now I'm gonna go through the next 11 now. Top 11 now. See my thread's coming out on the left. And then I'm gonna go up the 6mm bead, go through some beads at the top, I have to reinforce it because it's quite loose. And then go through all those beads at the top. 
and then go back down the 6mm beat. Now here, this is the beat I went up. I was coming on the left side, so I'm gonna go through the right. And now I'm gonna turn it over and go through the last beat at the top. I'm gonna go up the 6mm beat and try to get through some the beats at the top, if I can. No, I can't. It's quite tight by now. And then I'll try and get it done, going through some beats at the top. And then make the whole round. And then go down the last beats and straight through 6mm beat. And then come out. Now find the beat that you are coming out of. See this beat here? That's the last beat I went through because you can see there is no connection on this side to the 6mm beat. So I'm gonna go through that beat and pull the thread and you're done. That's how you attach the clasp. And now I just have enough thread here. I'm gonna go down some beads. Take my needle under the thread between the two beads, make a loop and pull the thread. Then I'm gonna go down through some more beads. Take my needle under. Make a small loop and pull my thread. Then I'm gonna go a couple more beads down. And then I'm gonna make my last beat, must, last loop. It's just, it's the end and it's the side of the clasp and I just wanna make sure it's all nice and tight and then so it's strong, that's why I made all three loops. And then I'm just gonna go down as far as I can. The thread, get rid of that. Um, get rid of the needle. And then I'm just gonna cut the thread at the very base. And look, that's how you attach the clasp. And then you wanna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. You'll just thread your needle here, add one bead in between those two beads three beads and then attach the clasp same way you did on this side and then once you're done with that i'm gonna meet you here so i have both of my herringbone necklaces ready so i have this one uh forest colors pine green and brown and then i have this lavender and iris brown necklace this one's 70 centimeters this one's 80 so i have two different lengths to work with same thing we did with the spiral necklaces so i hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial i hope you learned something new and i'll see you in the next one stick around for more uh, tutorials of the project long necklace bye bye